Thank you, gentlemen. I'd now uh, like to introduce our second panel of witnesses. Sean Moulton is director of the Open Government Policy Center for Effective Government. He is the author of several reports on open government and transparency. Kevin L. Goldberg is an attorney and is here representing the American Society of News Editors and the Sunshine in Government Initiative. Uh, Thomas Blanton is the uh, director of the National Security Archive and Independent Research Institution at George Washington University. Thank you all for joining us. Your complete writ written testimonies will uh, be made part of the record. You each have five minutes for any uh, opening remarks that you'd like to make. Uh, Mr. Molden, please go ahead. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, thank you for inviting me to testify today on the important topic of fulfilling the promise of open government, the impacts of the Open Government Act, and agency performance on FOIA. My name is Sean Moulton. I'm the Director of Open Government Policy at the Center for Effective Government, formerly OMB Watch, an independent nonpartisan policy organization. Improving citizen access to public information has been an important part of our work for almost 30 years. I'd like to begin with a quick look at FOIA implementation. Today we published our analysis of FOIA performance at 25 agencies, including most cabinet level departments. Our analysis evaluated performance on processing of requests, the rates of requests granted, and the use of exemptions. In fiscal year 2012, the Obama administration processed more FOIA requests than any than in any year since 2004. Specific, specifically, the 25 agencies processed more than 512,000 requests, an 8% increase over the previous year. As a result, 12,000 fewer requests were still pending at the end of the year, a 12% com decline compared to 2011. Nevertheless, more than 80,000 requests remained unprocessed at year's end. In terms of granting requests, 19 of the 25 agencies fully denied requests less than 10% of the time. The, Homeland, the Department of Homeland Security denied requests less than 1% of the time. Not surprisingly, the Central Intelligence Agency and State Department were the most likely to fully deny requests, rejecting 59% and 44% respectively. Overall, in 2012, agencies granted in full or in part 94% of requests processed. However, the administration's performance continues to rely much more heavily on partial releases rather than full releases. In fact, granting in full declined to the lowest level on record to just under 41%. Conversely, partially granted requests are at a near record high. And we are, based on the information reported, we are unable to say just how partial these releases were. We could be talking about releasing 99 documents out of 100 or withholding 99 documents and only releasing one. Both would be a partial grant. We also found that the total use of exemptions rose by 26% from the previous year. Three exemptions accounted for almost three quarters of exemptions used. Personal privacy, law enforcement personal privacy, and law enforcement techniques for prosecution. Each were used approximately 100,000 times or more. Use of internal rules exemption, which was once among the most frequent used, was almost entirely eliminated with a 92% reduction, part of an ongoing shift from a 2011 Supreme Court ruling that restricted the use of the exemption. However, an increase in the use of interagency memos exemption suggests that some agencies may have expanded its use to withhold records previously claimed as internal rules. This overview of FOIA performance indicates that the changes brought from the Open Government Act and the Obama administration's new FOIA policies have made some positive impact on FOIA implementation. But serious challenges and disparities remain. We would like to offer six recommendations to improve FOIA performance. Improve compliance efforts, a stronger ombudsman, expanded proactive disclosure, better technology, congressional oversight, and expanded reporting. First, we believe the De Justice Department should be more aggressive in overseeing FOIA compliance. There need to be greater incentives for strong performance and stronger penalties for failures to comply. Second, the Office of Government Information Services, created under the Open Government Act, should be expanded and strengthened. 
OGIS is already having a positive impact on FOIA implementation, and we firmly believe the benefits would be greater if its capacity were increased. Third, we recommend expanding FOIA's proactive disclosure requirements to make more information available without needing to file a request. Agencies should be required to routinely post key information about how they are operating. Agencies should also have to post record, records already released in response to other FOIA requests. Fourth, agencies should leverage technology to build on the tracking numbers required by the Open Government Act and provide automatic status updates to FOIA requests. Additionally, agencies should be able to receive requests and post responses online. The new interagency portal, FOIA Online, already has, offers many of these features, and it should continue to be improved, and participation should be expanded to include more agencies. Fifth, congressional, uh, Congress should codify the presumption of openness, the foreseeable harm standard, and the affirmative obligation to disclose. We also encourage committees of jurisdiction to continue to exercise assertive oversight into FOIA by holding regular hearings, issuing letters of inquiry, and ordering GAO studies. Finally, we, recommended, we recommend expanded reporting requirements to describe how much information is being withheld under these partial releases, such as a record or page count of what's being released and what's being withheld. Like the committee, the Center for Effective Government is committed to improving FOIA and ensuring that federal agencies provide timely and complete responses to the public's request for information. I look forward to the committee's questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moulton. Mr.